We're very, very much on a time crunch from the prep stages to actually building the costumes to getting them stage ready. On average, the design period, including doing the artwork and prepping all the characters um, on a virtual concept and then actually being to design, I have about three to four months if we're lucky. I'm Marina Tobina. I'm the costume designer for The Masked Singer. Most of the time, I probably have about five to seven costumes overlapping, building from the masks to the actual body to footwear to gloves, all happening at the same time. So somebody will have one piece of the costume, will have the other. So it's a pretty, pretty crazy time restraint and very fortunate if I even get two fittings with our talent. We've learned how to juggle and how to work under extreme high pressures and high um, time demands, you know, and unrealistic deadlines, but at the same time, um, try and produce the best that we can. I do a lot of work by hand, so everything you see, you know, just even like to get them to the fitting stage and what we do after and finish the costumes is pretty, pretty phenomenal. So I'm very blessed of the team that I have. The White Tiger, um, not only did we have to create a mass body and knowing who's going into the costume, being able to work around his own physique, but it's probably the most elevated costume we've ever had. The handwork that went into carving the mask alone to get those features, the way that they are and being able to airbrush them and make it look as real as possible probably was a, a unique way for us to fabricate a mask and the detailing on the costume alone you know, it's not easy to find your white tiger materials just laying around. So we had to create our own furs, our own textures. And um, the skirt alone, I probably re-sewed about four to five times just to get it right for the shape. So all those things and all those elements, you know, alone probably took us five weeks just to complete it before it was fitting ready. It's been a while since I did something that scared me. So I'm here to conquer yet another challenge. A lot of my costumes, for me personally, I like them to tell a story. So for this, um, when we came down to let's do a white tiger, something slightly different from what either other shows have done or what you would expect, then knowing that I wanted this to be like a god type figure, I went into the Egyptian era and trying to make it more of a pharaoh. You know, what can we do with this kind of statuesque persona, you know, and him being exotic and different already and bringing the, the power into it. When I did the artwork, it kind of naturally gravitated towards the direction of, a, of some sort of a god. Even when I first got here, I felt like I was at a party meant for other people. Like I was the odd cat out. The second one is almost the female version of the White Tiger. It's my burlesque kitty. This was a stunning costume to make. Um, every part, every element that you see on this costume was truly hand beaded, a couturier way of designing a costume. I wanted it to feel as period as we can go without still aging the talent that was inside the costume. We did have somebody of, of a younger age that was going into it, so I wanted to let her be playful, let her be fun. So it was very important for me um, to work with a burlesque mask is to create the head crown, the boa head crown that's set on top of the mask. And that was a tricky part to do because we had to maintain the weight and not let it overtake the actual, you know, frame of the mask. So that took a lot of trials and errors, figure out how to wire, how to create a balance, and how to also make sure, once again, that she does not overheat in the costume. Very similar build on the mask. We did something very unique by doing a dual eye color, which became a guessing game, you know, in the show, trying to figure out which talent was inside the mask. And by no means was it a clue. It was just something fun that we wanted to do, but it definitely distracted the judges and the audience. I've done a lot of research on how to build an internal structure that could carry the shape of a burlesque dancer, and then we went through and hand beaded every element of that costume, including then designing a typical burlesque skirt with it. We try out, like I said, so many different techniques and elements. Uh, I love the robot. I thought that was a new take on a costume for me, even to learn how to fabricate head to toe a foam costume that could still move and still have a, a very robotic kind of texture to it and keeping it lightweight was a challenge. What's so great about all these characters and I, I would love them the second they stand on stage, let them speak for themselves. You know, right away when you see the white tiger, you know that there's a royalty aspect to it, that there's a richness of this powerful persona that you're gonna, you know, hear this incredible music from. 
So for me, it's if I can tell a story through a costume and then let the audience kind of enjoy the moment and the environment that they're in, that's the best part.